when it comes to buying an airplane, what are the most important contributing factors for you to decide that this is the right plane for you? Is it about safety and comfort? Is it about the reliability, dispatchability, and the overall readiness of the airplane for all of the flight missions that you're planning to execute? Maybe this is about performance and flight characteristics. Or maybe it is all about the joyful feeling and experience from the looks and feel of your airplane in flight. Well, whatever it is for you, this beautiful masterpiece behind me is ready to offer. The state-of-the-art airplane fulfills all of your wildest desires. This is the brand new Diamond DA50RG. Hello, my name is Alexander. Welcome to Agman's Aviation and welcome to our showcase of Diamond DA50RG. Today is a very frosty day and we are here at Lima Juliet Mike Brau, which is a Maribor International Airport, which happens to be a base of Egmont Aviation. We have just received the brand new directly from the factory facility Diamond DA50RG for our, one of our clients from Slovenia, as you might guess from the registration, which begins with Sierra 5, which is a nationality mark of Slovenia. Well, having this opportunity, we want to share our joy with you in this video. So this is what we're going to do. Part one of the video, we are going to dedicate for the showcase of the exterior and interior of the airplane. We'll discuss the most important features of this plane. In the second part of the video, we are going to take it for a flight. We'll share our experience of how does it actually feel to fly this beauty. In the final section of the video, we are going to sit down in the briefing room and spend some time reviewing the performance and mass and balance fi uh, figures. We will have a look at the takeoff and landing distances, we will calculate the mass and balance, we will find the actual payload versus range and endurance of the airplane, and we will find the actual fuel burn that you can expect to get from this airplane. As we approach the airplane, the first thing that you are actually fascinated by is of course its appearance and its livery. Here is one of the many liveries that you can select as the future owner and we are more than sure of your next favorite single-engine piston land airplane. Now here is the Diamond Premium Dash livery, which comes into a two-tone finish where we have a dark grey part of the fuselage with some black stripes and an extra touch of red stripes and this is the color which is actually called by Diamond as a wild cherry red. This livery is on top of the all carbon fiber fuselage and for Diamond Fleet it has been crucial since the beginning of times. And it is very important if you think about it because what it actually does, it reduces the basic empty mass of the plane. Why do you think this is important? This is because the Diamond is trying to achieve the highest possible useful load for you as an owner. For this airplane, the maximum takeoff mass is 1,999 kilograms. The basic empty mass is 1,450 kilograms in the basic version of the plane. Simple algebra gives us the idea that the useful load for this plane can be as high as 549 kilograms. This is actually one of the best useful loads that you can achieve in this range of airplanes. Here is another thing. By having it certified as 1,999 kilograms of maximum takeoff mass, it's actually a very smart move by Diamond. Because in most of the countries around Europe and around the world, you will not be charged by the air traffic control services for the use of airspace if your maximum takeoff mass is less than 2,000 kilograms. Which, as you can already guess, 1,999 kilograms gives you the opportunity to achieve. The heart of the plane is of course its engine, and here we have a wild beast. This is a Continental Charlie Delta 300. It is a diesel engine, it has a V configuration, it has six cylinders, it is a two-valve system for each cylinder, common rail fuel injection system, it is double turbocharged engine, it has 
double redundant FADEX system. It has wet sump and it has a liquid cooling system because it is so much powerful. So once again, this is a diesel engine, therefore it is a jet fuel powered engine. This engine is complemented by an all wooden, highly sophisticated prop. Together, they give you a very, very good performance. From the engine itself, you can expect to get 300 horsepower on the maximum power and 272 horsepower on the maximum continuous power. Now, another two great things about the engine is, as you may already recall, it is powered by the Jet A fuel, basic Jet A1 or whatever jet fuel you have, and this is cool because look at it, it's wild. It's ready for all your flight missions. It is fully IFR equipped. It, this version actually has a TKS system installed, so it is ready to counteract the icing conditions. So of course you want to take it for a spin to international airports. Now, because it is powered by the diesel engine and because it is supplied with the jet fuel, you will never ever have any problems of whatsoever with refueling. Because it's jet fuel and because there are a lot of jets flying to international airports, they are refueling with jet fuel and you will be refueling with jet fuel. Not only it widens the horizons of your flight, but it's actually a very good thing for the fuel consumption. Jet engines, uh, I mean diesel engines that are run by jet fuel, give you a pretty decent fuel burn. At the economy power setting, you can expect the fuel burn from this engine as low as 8 gallons per hour, which is around 30 liters per hour. Second of all, when you fly to the smaller fields, most of the smaller fields in Europe already have Jet A1 fuel ready for you. So with this one, you shouldn't really experience any problems with refueling at all. Another thing, this is a FADEC engine. So what this means, the FADEC itself is the full authority digital engine control. This means that the power of the engine is actually controlled by an engine electronic control unit. You might ask, what does it mean for me as a pilot? Well, remember your flight training. When you start from the basic airplanes that have a constant speed prop, and this is of course a constant speed propeller, when you have this prop, you expect to have three power levers, basically three levers to regulate the power output of your airplane. You would have a throttle control to regulate manifold pressure, you would have an RPM control, and you would have a mixture control. So you would be playing with all of those to select the percentage of the power output that you want to get from your engine. Well, this is of course a cool thing, and this is what we all have done in the past, but you don't need to do this anymore. Because with FADEC, you have only one single lever power control. This means that instead of playing with manifold pressure, RPM and mixture setting, you just use one throttle to set the percentage of the power output that you want to get from your engine. Not only this is easy, not only this is convenient, it means that you will always get the maximum power output versus the minimum fuel consumption that is possible to achieve at a specific altitude, at a specific pressure, with a specific temperature. If you pay closer attention to the propeller itself, you will once again notice that this plane is ready for all of your planned flight missions. This is all because we have an electric heating element installed on the prop. Which brings us to a very important conclusion. One of the options, and this is the option of the airplane that we have here for our client, is to have it approved for the flights into no icing conditions. This is all because we have the electric heating of the prop and if you go, if you move to the wing, you will notice that we have a fantastic TKS fluid de-icing system installed on the wing and on the tail surfaces. The wing itself is a masterpiece. Just have a look at it and appreciate the wingspan. The wingspan is huge, it is 13 meters and 41 centimeters, which is great. And it has been specifically designed so to give you a great aerodynamic and flight handling characteristic throughout the whole range of altitudes that you can fly. Now this plane is certified to fly up to 20 thousand feet which is awesome therefore next time you fly you can jump over those mountains and you can jump over the clouds and some of the weather 
Another thing, you have two fuel tanks here installed, which can accommodate up to 49 of US gallons of Jet A1 fuel, which on a standard day, on a sort of economy power range, uh, you can achieve 750 nautical miles of range. Another cool feature about the wing, as you might notice, you have a pair of winglets, which is here to reduce the induced drag created by the wing and once again increase your range and endurance. The new diamond addition to its wing design is the brand new double slotted flap. This is a cool thing because it has two slots, because it's double slotted, it can reduce even further your stalling speeds. This gives you two things. First of all, it is now even safer to fly at slower speeds, but also now because you can fly at slower speeds, you can also reduce your landing distance and landing roll. As we get closer to the fuselage once again, and if you look below the wing, you will find the actual RG part of this plane. Now the RG is the retractable gear, and I believe it is a very smart move by Diamond. Of course, after takeoff, by retracting the gear, you will reduce the total amount of drag that you produce by once again, and once again you will increase the range, you'll increase the endurance by reducing the fuel burn of the plane. It is a safe design system, therefore, of course, if in a very, very unlikely event, should something go wrong with the hydraulic system and the landing gear would not go down normally, you of course have an emergency gear extension tool, which will basically help you to lower the gear by free fall. So you'll release the hydraulic pressure and the landing gear will come down by its own weight. The feature that Diamond is particularly proud about is its new braking system, which uh, is claimed by Diamond to minimize, like really minimize the landing roll after you land. I don't want to give you any random figures just yet. I don't want to give you the standard performance figures that Diamond gives you on the website. Remember, at the end of the video, we are going to sit down in the briefing room, open the airplane flight manual and recalculate everything for our hypothetical scenario. As we move closer to the tail, you can notice the diamond branding, right? And the diamond branding is, of course, its magnificent T-tail. You also notice that, as mentioned earlier, we have a TKS uh, fluid de-icing system installed on all of the tail surfaces. But what is also very interesting about the tailplane is the rudder. And on the rudder, you have a rudder trim, which comes very handy when you try to balance that moment, you know, during the flight. I mean, the moment from the engine that makes you yaw. This is a cool feature, and we will show it to you in the cockpit and how to use it. It's electrical. But this is not it. The coolest thing about this one is that it has a yaw dampfer installed. You may think, why should I care for yaw dampfer? It's a standard single engine piston land, I know how to use my rudder panels, and I never had any problems with that. That is absolutely true, right? Because your flight instructor did a great job by teaching you how to use the rudder pedals in flight and contract all of the moments. That is absolutely true. But do you really want to do this? Do we really want to work with the adverse you in our turns? Do we really want to all the time, you know, play with the rudder pedals to set the ball in the middle? Well, with Diamond, you don't. Because once you switch on the yaw dampfer, it's an automatic system that will keep your plane balanced in terms of yaw. You don't use it for takeoff and landing, of course, because for takeoff and landing, you're, you're on the rudder pedals all the time. But once you're in the air, after takeoff, you are free to switch the yaw dampfer on and you can forget you can literally forget about touching your rudder pedals in flight with this airplane with the yaw dampfer installed. Let's get back to the fuselage. As we're getting closer, you can really start to appreciate the dimensions of the cabin. Diamond DA50RG is a five-seater airplane. It has a lot of space at the back where you can actually accommodate not two, but three passengers. Not only this, but you actually have quite an impressive storage space where you can put all of your belongings or whatever you want that you need to take with you on a flight. One of the features that I really like about Diamond is uh, 
the way that the doors open. If you're a huge fan like me of Tesla Model X and especially the way that the doors open, you're gonna like this one as well. Check it out. This is beautiful. Don't know about you, I really like it. I really enjoy the way, the feel, and if you get away from the airplane, this looks superb. But um, anyways, the cabin dimensions are great. It is very easy to get to the baggage compartment because you can just fold the seat. And once the seat is folded, you get the full access to, to the baggage compartment. Now, we already have a lot of stuff packed here because this is a brand new airplane, so we have all of the paperwork, all of the documentation, we have some our personal stuff in there, plus we have a huge uh, cover to cover the plane. And as you can see, we can still put a lot of stuff we can still uh, have a lot of room and space to put something extra. Now you can fold not only this one, but you can also fold this one, so you can have a full access towards the baggage compartment. Now the unfolding is also very easy and very nice. The overall, um, the overall cabin also looks very welcoming. It's a genuine leather. We have some genuine Alcantara to finish on top of the leather. Um, it overall looks pretty much luxurious and uh, stylish, if uh, I may. Now, the next thing what I'm gonna do, let's jump in into the cabin. Let's have a look whether or not it's comfy to sit inside, and then we'll jump right into the cockpit. What can I say? It is comfortable and it is spacious. Uh, you know, I still have that Christmas dinner wait on me, but I feel very, very, very comfortable. I especially like the soft feel of the Alcantara and the Genuine Leather. I believe it's a very good cabin for your passengers to take them on a long flight. For the passengers, what you have here at the back is that, of course, you have the USB charging ports, because, hey, we just need them on the daily basis. You have some environmental system uh, things that you can direct some warm air uh, for your passengers to not get cold during the frosty winter mornings but it is not a regular plane so not only you have the regular flash air fresh air supply and uh, warm air you actually have a fully operational air conditioning system so for you and your passengers it doesn't really matter is it a frosty winter morning or a hot summer afternoon once you get into the into the airplane, once you get yourself comfortable, you switch on the environmental control system and you relax because you will always have a comfortable temperature, both in winter and during the summer days. Also, of course, we have some connectors for the uh, passenger headphones and we have some reading lights to accommodate for fax reading uh, during the dark hours of the day. But also what we have is the oxygen supply. Now, because the airplane is certified to fly above 10,000 feet, and because we need to have supplemental oxygen above 10,000 feet, this airplane provides it for you. You have an oxygen bottle that is filled with oxygen, and then you just connect yourself mask or a cannula and put over your face, and you are happily breathing supplemental oxygen above 10,000 feet, and you are safe. Now, well, this is of course all very fun and nice and interesting. The ladder, the Alcantara, the USB ports. But this is not why we are here, right? Let's get back into the cockpit. Let's get to the most interesting stuff. Let's start the engine and let's play with the avionics. Because the avionics in here is magnificent. And there is also one secret thing that I want to show you. It is an optional feature, but it will blow your mind. Welcome to the cockpit. Now, the first thing we notice once we get in is the magnificent instrument panel for the DA50RG. It is, of course, represented by the Garmin G1000 NXI with the PFD, the primary flight display, and the MFD, the multifunction flight display. What I want to do, uh, the first is, of course, to select the electrical master on and to start the initialization of the glass cockpit panel. Now, while it's loading, it's worth noting that G1000 NXI here is also represented in conjunction with the Garmin GFC700 Autopilot. 
Now, this is a very interesting autopilot because it is a three-axis autopilot, which means that not only you have your usual LNAV and VNAV modes to go full-scale IFR, because this is once again something that you should be doing with this plane, but it also has a third axis. This is a yaw dampfer. Remember that feature that we have discussed when we've been talking about the tail section of the airplane. Now, our plan for now is as follows. We want to, first of all, start the engine so that we are charging the battery. And uh, then we are going to discuss the whole panel and all of the features that you have here combined with the features of the G1000 NXI and some of the features of the autopilot. So at this stage, what the, what the pilot would usually do is to grab the checklist and run through the checklist before the engine start. Now, this is, of course, the proper thing to do. But for most of the planes, this is represented in a paper format. Now, this is, of course, not a standard for a diamond aircraft. Therefore, if we click on to continue and we start working with the MFD, what you can find here is the checklist function. And if we click on the checklist, we get to all the checklists that we have for this plane. Therefore, you always have at your disposal the electronic checklist for anything you need when it comes to flying this airplane. This is, of course, much more convenient uh, than the paper checklist, and I think you can agree here with me, it is just much more fun. So we are now here on the MFD at the checklist section, and we are in the group of the normal procedure checklist, and this is our before engine start checklist. It is absolutely the same as in the airplane flight manual, so basically you would just go run through the whole of it, and it's probably the largest checklist you have for this plane. Now, we've already done this. We don't want to spend time on this right now. Therefore, we want to go to the checklists and we want to select the engine start checklist for the engine start. I like the electronic checklist and I like this feature and you already might appreciate how comfortable this is. But you might also notice that I always have to lean towards the MFD. And of course, this is perfectly acceptable and this is what you have to do when you're interacting with it, but it feels like this is not the standard which the Diamond E50RG can actually give us. So if you look over here, we have a very secret feature. And if you open it, you will find a full-scale alphanumeric keyboard that will help you to control Oh, in a very comfortable manner, both your PFD and the MFD. So this is exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm going to run through the engine star checklist and by clicking enter and interacting with the alphanumeric keyboard, I will be actually changing what we see on the checklist at the MFD screen. So let's do the engine star checklist. The propeller area is clean. And once I press enter over here, what you can see on the MFD is the item that you complete becomes fully green, which means that you have completed this item. The engine master. We put the engine master on. We check the engine annunciators. Checked. Glow indication. We have the glow indication right now here because we have glow plugs and we are waiting for the glow plugs to preheat the cylinders. And once it's off, we check it's off and we are ready to go further. Now, the, the next thing is the start button. And uh, that is basically it. Here on Diamond DA50RG, we start the engine with the help of the fade deck. Therefore, we have a start-stop button. And this is exactly what we are going to utilize. Before that, I'll quickly shout out Clear Pro, please. Thank you very much. Left side clear, right side is clear. And let's start the engine. Voila! We continue with the checklist. Start button pressed. That one is complete. Oil pressure. We'll check in oil pressure. It's already in the green band. Minimum 2.3 bar within three seconds. Checked. Annunciators and engine instruments are all checked and we see that the glow is on. Therefore, it helps the engine to continue with the preheating because it's actually a very, very cold day. This thing is complete. So the engine start checklist has just been completed fully electronically with the comfort of the alphanumeric keyboard with the start stop button. This is impressive. This is amazing. And it is so much 
easier and so much more comfortable than on most of the airplanes. And here is why. Today, it is zero degrees Celsius outside. It is quite cold. And usually what you would do with the piston engines is that you would have to come to the plane. You would have to get into the cockpit. You would have to prime your engine. Sometimes you would have to play a little bit with the throttle. Sometimes you would have to play a little bit with the mixture settings that you are using, you know, for the engine start. Now, I haven't done any of that. Absolutely, I haven't done anything. The only thing I did was that I've completed the checklist. I've checked that the FADEC is in auto position. I put the engine master switch, which does all the work for the engine, and then press the start stop button. Everything else was taken care of automatically with the use of the FADEC. This is a super safe design, and it is very, very convenient to do the start procedures this way. It's simple for you, and it's much safer and much better for the engine to regulate itself. Now, if we get to the engine panel, have a look at the RPM. Right now we have 660 RPM on the engine. Now, and you already know this if you fly, is that the airplane flight manual usually states what kind of RPM you should set after the engine start. Now, some planes say 1000, some planes 1200, it really depends on the engine you have. But if you noticed, I haven't done anything. I was not regulating anything when it came to the throttle. The only thing I had to do is to put the throttle in a very special position. And this very special position is called the ground idle, the GI, that Golf India letters that signify that the throttle is now in the ground idle. And if I put the throttle to the ground idle position, FADEC takes care of everything and it regulates after the engine start automatically to the RPM required by the AFM, Airplane Flight Manual. Once we will be ready to go out, once we're ready to taxi, I will just simply put the throttle into the flight idle position, the Foxtrot India position. And you might have heard the click. And this is the click because in flight, this latch that you have here below the throttle will not let you to go with the power setting below the flight idle. So once you're landed after the flight, you will need to pull the latch and manually bring the throttle all the way back to the ground idle position. So the ground idle position does basically two things for you in this plane. First of all, it will help you with the startup and the RPM regulation after the engine start. And after the end of your flight, it will help you to regulate the RPM to cool the engine down. Because once again, it's a six cylinder, 300 horsepower, dual turbocharged engine, which you really need to cool down for at least two minutes after you, uh, after you have landed on the ground idle position. So, how simple is that? How nice is that? Next, what we wanna do is to have a look and talk a little bit about everything that we have here. So we can start from the left position, from the top left of the instrument panel. The first thing you notice is your de-icing panel for you to regulate and control the DIs, the TKS DIs that is installed on the plane. This is an option, so it's an optionary equipment that you can select or not select to have for your plane. If we go below, we have FADEC, and remember we have two FADECs here, FADEC A and FADEC B, and the normal position, of course, for this type of plane is to have it in auto mode. Below you have your alternators, to the left you have the air vent and have a look at this thing. This is a RAM mount which can help you to mount your iPad or the device of your choice with which you are used to be flying already in the cockpit. 
So the rear mount is already here. The only thing you need is the connector for the rear mount and the case for your iPad or your phone. And you can just stick it here in a very safely manner. And Diamond has already taken care of this for you because they already specified the place and the most comfortable position for you to set your device in the cockpit so it does not obstruct the view of your glass panel. Next. Another very cool feature that we have here is the, rud is the rudder pedal adjustments. Now remember how on most of the planes you have to lean, you have to dig the cables, you know, you have to push it and adjust. And uh, in a lot of cases it doesn't really work, so you have to try it a couple of times. Well, this is of course not for diamond, because what we have here is the electronic adjustment of the rudder pedals. So if I press for the pedal adjustment to go back, what you can see is that the pedals, they are moving closer to me. Front, they go away. So basically, you can very quickly and very fast adjust the way you like the rudder pedals, which is brilliant and very, very comfy. Then we'll have the propeller DIs, we have the fuel transfer and a couple of things that are related to the engine, such as the emergency fuel pump, the engine start-stop button and the engine master switch, which takes care about the engine. Then we'll have some electrical stuff. We have the essential bus, we have the electric master switch, we have the avionics master, and we have your pita stall and your uh, pita stall hit. We have some test buttons for the gear and the stall warning, and we have the gear indication, and it's the regular thing. You have the three green lights, which will uh, tell you whether or not the nose left or right gear in commanded position and you have the red light to signify that it is in the unsafe position. Now, for you to be calm and make sure that everything is safe, in case your landing gear will not extend, you have the emergency gear extension tool right over here, which is very simple to use, and it basically will help you to drop the landing gear and extend the landing gear by its own weight. Then, of course, we have our PFD of the G1000. We have our communication panel. You have your standby instruments, which will help you in a very unlikely event that uh, should the G1000 fail or you lose electric electricity. At the top, we have our lighting, lighting panel, landing light, taxi light, position and strobes. Then, of course, we have our Garmin GFC 700 autopilot. We have the MFD. And at the bottom, you have your flaps regulator, and to the right of it, you have the ELT and all of the circuit breakers. Now, another thing I really like about the diamond design is that you have all of your circuit breakers pretty much at the same position in front of you. So if you hear the click in flight, or if you notice that something is wrong, you will notice it because it is right in front of you. So no more hidden circuit breakers, no more circuit breakers up front, to the left, to the right, behind the control column. Now, this is not for about diamond. You have everything in front of you to make sure that everything works in terms of electrical systems and it works completely fine. Next, as you might have already noticed, there is a magic blue button that is called a level. Now, this is a button that works in conjunction with the Garmin Autopilot, which will help you to level off the airplane in flight should something go wrong. So if you're flying manually, you know, and you're not happy with what's happening with the airplane, and you know, maybe you have a strange pitch or you have a strange roll. So basically something is wrong, you can press the level button and it will help you to automatically level the airplane in flight. This is a very, very safe system design. Once we go from top to bottom, we have our environmental control system. What we want to do right now, because once again, it's pretty cold outside, we want to, we want to select a little bit of a warmer temperature and we can switch on the fan and we have the circulating air on and we will get the very nice and warm air very quickly, very quickly in the cockpit and in the cabin uh, of the plane. Next, of course, you have your uh, throttle. Uh, in conjunction with the throttle, you have the uh, go-round button, the go-round switch, which will help you to perform a missed approach maneuver with the autopilot and flight director system. And 
from the opposite side of the throttle you have your left and right rudder trim so you can actually very nicely trim your airplane completely when flying manually by trimming rudder with your right hand you know with two of your fingers and of course trimming the elevator with your left hand because the electrical trim for the elevator is on the control stick now if we move further down you of course have your conventional elevator trim wheel and very hidden very hidden you have the fuel selector panel and the connectors for your head set that is basically it these are the most uh, the most of the things that you have in the cockpit the last a couple of things i want to mention is uh, that once again it is super comfortable to use the um, alphanumerical keyboard with the alphanumeric keyboard you can control once again the um, pfd and the mfd and you can do all sorts of things that you might need right now we'll be controlling the mfd and we can actually go to the flight plan section and we can create a quick flight plan just for the sake of demonstration so we are currently at Lima Juliet Mike Bravo Maribor International Airport so let's insert LJMB for the departure and we have here is the uh, Maribor International Airport we'll press enter and execute uh, nothing for the in route we can select actually some departure procedure for Maribor uh, something to our into our direction yeah let it be to Valu we can load this and then we can uh, sorry get to the destination section and we can put here Lima Juliet Lima Juliet which is the Ljubljana International Airport once you click click enter and just also we can select the uh, arrival procedure uh, doesn't really matter but let it be this one for example and we can then select the procedure for the approach which is the usual thing for Ljubljana is to go with the ILS 3.0 and we can go with the transition so it's very cool, it's very neat, you get all the info you need, again, it's a fully IFR ready airplane, you have all the databases, you're prepared for everything in conjunction with the GFC 700 autopilot, Garmin G1000, of course, with the alphanumeric keyboard, you know, to just make it more comfortable and make it more convenient for you. Let's get back uh, from the flight plan mode to our um, map. Also, another cool thing, you of course, on such a big screen, you have a safe taxi feature. So once you're taxiing on the ground, you can see everything um, around yourself. You can see all the taxiways and you can see yourself from the top superimposed onto the taxiways, you know, to just to make sure that at the busy environment, you know where you actually are on the ground and that you know where you actually are going. So once we are in the map mode, let's discuss the map mode a little bit in greater details. What you can see currently uh, are the airplanes uh, flying around us and it is possible to see them because we have a traffic advisory system installed. We of course have an ADS-B and we can see uh, all of the traffic around us that are using ADS-B and the secondary surveillance uh, transponders, which is very, very nice. If we have a look at the different modes of the map, we have, of course, the navigation map, the IFR, VFR charts. We have the dedicated traffic mode for you to specifically watch out for the traffic. We have the storm scope installed as an option for this airplane, so you will be able to see the thunders around you, which will signify that there is a thunderstorm going on and a very nice optional equipment, but already installed for this owner is the data link weather now it says that the weather is currently unavailable because the owner will have to purchase a subscription it's an iridium subscription to get the data link weather but you will be able to have all the in route weather in flight and you will have the meters and tabs everything you need during the actual flight 
Then, of course, we have the very, very detailed terrain, which comes handy in the terrain and the region that we are currently flying. Next, a couple of extra points that I want to go through before we take this bird for a test flight is, uh, of course, the air conditioning panel. Right now we are using the heater, which is very, very nice. It's getting very cozy in the plane. It's very warm and we get a very, very good air filter in Diamond. And this is very nice because usually when you switch on the heater on most of the planes, you get that burnt smell uh, that comes from it. Now, this is not about the DA50RG. You don't smell anything like that. It's very warm. You can very precisely regulate it so you can play with the temperature control and you can set it up precisely as you want. Of course, if it would be a hot summer sunny afternoon, we would go for the air conditioning panel and we will actually be cooling ourselves down even while staying on the ground. The last feature I want to discuss is the brilliant sun visor that we get from Diamond. It is very easy to stow, it is very easy to get it for yourself, and this is a game changer. You can play with the regulations, you can put it to different angles, whatever you want and whatever you desire, but I like it because it's a see-through sun visor. It is literally a game changer because it does not obscure the view of your departure or your in-route flying or especially your final approach when you are doing that final approach on a crazy sunny afternoon when you are approaching directly against the sunlight. It's very nice. It doesn't let the sun rays through. It doesn't burn your eye, but you can still see everything you need to see outside of the cockpit. Now, what can I say? Diamond DA50RG is a dream come true for any pilot. I'm super excited. I cannot wait to give this bird a fly test. And this is exactly what we are going to do now.